Today, I'm gonna to show you real use cases of generative AI to create video effects, and even how to turn yourself into an animated character using AI. I also sat down with Brian Sanford from the Versus Creative Studio to talk about how they use AI in their commercial work. If you're ready, let's jump on in. The first way you can use AI is to take a still photo and make it come to life. For example, we can take the stock photo here that we got from Envato and let's make it move. Now you can try out this effect with many different AI tools out there, which we'll list in our description box below, but we're gonna try it out with the Adobe Firefly beta. So let's go to generate video. Here we can upload the photo and write a text prompt and then click generate. And now we wait. And it's done. Let's see what we got. But what about photos of people in real life situations? Can we use AI to bring life to archival photos to use in documentaries, for example? So Versus has actually workshopped several use cases where they've taken still images, they added movement to it using AI to extend the life of that asset. So here I have Brian. Hey Kelsey, thanks for having me on. Brian, can you tell us about some examples of some of these photos that you've brought life to? At Versus, we're doing a lot of documentary filmmaking. And as all documentary editors know, you get saddled with a lot of archival images. We wanted to use AI image gen to help bring some of those images to life. So we're not just doing pans and zooms. For example, in our film, The Abductee, we used our protagonist's images in a really interesting way. In this image here, we put a close-up of his eyes and created a moment of tension for something that was more of an introductory image. We just had him in a nice profile, like looking to camera, some dust and atmosphere around him. So when you were thinking about adding movement to these images, were you just using text prompts to add the movement? We created a new image from the archival. So we're going into Photoshop, where we're cutting him out, we're putting him on a background that we like, and then we're going into image gen to create the still that we want before bringing it into video gen. So the video generation isn't adding that atmosphere, but we are making it in the still. So then our prompt will say like clouds move slowly across the frame. Oh, okay, that make, that's very creative, I love that. I think it's a great point about ideation and even if you don't use that exact visual in the final edit, I did another video previously where we talk about creating a treatment to communicate a visual with your team so then you can go on and create that with the actual high res assets because right now a lot of these tools are either in beta, they're not accessible by a lot of creatives, or they're only outputting like 720p and it just doesn't look as good. Exactly. For our next use case, you can take any character design, for example, one that you design yourself, or you can search in Vato for any graphic, for example, like one of these, and we can bring it to life. Here's how. I have this little ghosty PNG ready to go. Now we just need a background. This time I'll use Envato's new AI image gen to generate one. Let's type in a scary school hallway at night in a cartoon style and generate. I think this generation should work. To add our ghost in there, let's open up Photoshop and let's drop our ghost to the background. And since we're here, we might as well do a little bit of color correction to fit our subject to the scene better. Now, I think I'm happy with this. Let's export it as a JPEG and open up Firefly. Let's go to generate video again and import the image we just made and let's write in a prompt. I want the ghost to come towards the camera. Then we can hit generate and here's the result. Okay, so somehow Firefly turned our little cartoon ghost into something creepy, which is what I wanted here, but some weirdness is happening here up in the ceiling. So how about let's generate again? I definitely like this one more, although the tongue morphing into a mouth is just, no. <laughs> but I can trim out the beginning in Premiere Pro and now it is golden. So as you can see here with AI generation, it's a lot of trial and error but the best results come when you upload that image reference. So that's why we went to Photoshop, made some changes, and then uploaded to Firefly until we got the result we wanted. As you've seen, we've been using images as the source for then AI to generate effects and video from. But what if we take it a step further and we have AI generate all of the assets? Now Versus did just this, where they created an animated end tag commercial entirely using AI tools. So I have Brian here to tell us about this process. We were tasked to create a 10 second end tag for a fruit 
drink brand. So the first thing that we did was we created storyboards. And as you'll see from these storyboards, we start on a close up of an apple and we pan all the way down to a tree stump where there'll be some apple slices and a can. Now, if you're familiar with AI video gen, it does not like long camera paths and we needed that and we needed to have control over it. Our rough workflow was we were gonna generate images in Adobe Firefly. Then we we're gonna use those images to drive gen video then create our stage, so to speak, using Gen Fill in Adobe Photoshop. And then we would create and render our 3D can asset and composite it into our scene. Here, you can see our image gen. We use some reference to drive this image generation of an Apple scene that we kind of like. These are some of the images that we generated. We got to image number four and image number eight. We liked them a lot, but they needed a little bit of cleanup. We took that image and we used it to drive video gen with Firefly. It made a really good video clip, but as you can see at the end, a hand just kind of comes in and picks the apple, which we didn't really want. <laughs> a lot of times AI is doing those random things. So do you have any advice for prompting to help you get that particular winning shot? So I know there's this idea of writing like a two paragraph prompt as a way to get great AI results. But in my experience, having a great reference image where you've already decided that you like the lighting and you like the composition and using that to drive your video, that's gonna get you the most success and most likely the fewest of those hallucinations. That's really good advice. So from here, how did you make that movement happen? We uh, built out the long palette using generative fill in Photoshop, and then we took our camera in After Effects and moved it from the top of the frame down to the bottom. And it looks pretty convincing. Next, we went into cinema and did a quick model of our can for our product. Then we did a simple composite, and then again, we ran the move. And did you use any other assets as well in the final? After we got to this point, we decided that we actually wanted to push this idea a little further. So we went back into Firefly Video Gen and we started to just prompt it for like what were essentially a library of compositing assets. And we took all of those assets and recomposited them over our images. Let's see the final. Here it is. And you can see we grabbed a few clips from Envato to create the opening to the spot. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, it looks like it's ready to go to air like AI wasn't involved at all. Usually you can tell, but here you can't tell at all. I mean, this really comes back to our central POV about AI at Versus, which is that it's a powerful tool when it's put into the hands of talented, creative artists. There is no one-click solution for great creative work. This 10-second clip took a ton of knowledge and experience to pull off. It wasn't just done with a prompt. Yeah, I think that's great. And it really debunks a lot of the fear out there of people thinking, oh, you're just gonna become a text prompt master to produce a film. And that's not the case at all. You have to be very creative in your approach, just like with any technology, to be able to produce something that's awesome. So as Brian touched on, you can really combine elements of stock media with AI to generate some incredible animations and stories faster. My team and I use Envato for all of our stock media because it has everything conveniently in one place. It has stock video assets if we need it, if we need some animation templates, it has that too. It has font types, it has a great collection of sound effects. And now they also have an AI lab section where you can generate images and icons to use in your edit. For example, we can take those two animated generations we used with Envato assets and we can make them even scarier by finding overlays to add right here in Premiere Pro using Envato's extension. I think this one should work, but how about some horror theme transitions? Now they have plenty of that too. And I think it would be cool to end with this creepy title sequence here. And then we can bring it to life by layering in a ton of sound effects from Envato's huge sound effects library and let's see what we got. Now I'm obsessed with this sequence and it's a perfect example of how you can combine stock media with AI to produce really cool results. So not only does Envato have a ton of stock media to choose from, it's also one of the most affordable options out there for creatives. So if you wanna give it a try, you can use my link below to sign up and have fun with it. Thanks to Envato for sponsoring this video and now let's get into some more AI creative effects. So now let's talk about how we can use generative AI to extend or even enhance an existing video. For example, I can turn this normal hiking video into this. 
Now, in a recent video, I talked about the new Gen Extend tool in Premiere Pro that's currently inside of beta. And that's just for extending a clip a few more seconds from that last frame if you need to hold a little bit longer to have more frames for a transition or something like this. But what we're talking about in this video is how to use Firefly to essentially transform the video into something new while making it longer at the same time. Let's get into it. In Premiere Pro, let's go to the last frame of the video or any frame that you want to extend from. Then press Command or Control plus Shift E to export that current frame as an image file. Then we can open up Firefly's Generate Video and do like we did before. Drop in the image, write a text prompt, and for this shot, I'll add keywords like drone shot and quick zoom out, and then generate. And wait, what's this? So after trying out Firefly for a bit, it seems like it won't let me use a photo with an obvious human shape in it. I managed to get around this by exporting another frame of this hiker as he's walking. Maybe the fact that both of his feet aren't on the ground makes the AI think that it isn't human? I'm not fully sure, but here's the result. And here we face another minor issue. The frames don't seem to match here. And for some reason, the AI video is slightly stretched vertically compared to the original. So I'm gonna go to effect controls here and turn off uniform scale and squeeze it a little and add a letterbox to hide the edges. Now they seem to match a lot better. The timing is still a little bit weird. To fix this, I'll turn on time remapping and add a keyframe to speed up the start of the video by a lot. And let's drag out this handle to make the speed change happen more smoothly. I also added a transform effect on top of everything and keyframe the scale slightly before we switch to the AI video here so the zoom out doesn't happen too abruptly. So as you may have noticed, the quality difference is apparent and that's because when you export from Adobe Firefly, you're limited to 720p, not the original. So you're going to see a difference there and it may not be perfect, right? Because it's still in beta and it may have a little bit more of a painterly quality than you like, and that's okay. Sometimes when you're doing these type of things, it may not be for the final video effect, but it can just be to generate an idea that you can actually go out and film later on, which is what I talked about in the previous video when I generated a tennis commercial treatment as just to pitch the idea to get funded. Another thing we can do with AI is add something or composite an animation on a specific part of a video clip. For example, I have this video from Envato here with a person sitting on the left. While on the right side, it's relatively empty, right? So the key here is to get a shot where the person that's moving is not going to overlap with whatever we're going to add in with AI. So in my case, I wanna have a monster show up on this table back here. So let's export a frame of this video and we can import it into Firefly like we did before. And in the prompt, let's make sure to mention that the monster will be on the right side of the frame. Now, after a few tests and generations, I finally got this one that I liked, but you'll see that the shadows under the table are a little bit weird, but that's okay because we can just mask that out, no problem. So let's bump up the feather and here's the result. So obviously Adobe Firefly is super powerful, but I wanna take a second to check out another tool that's being developed by Runway AI and it's called Act One. Essentially with Act One, you serve as the actor puppet. So you can say a line in a particular style or any delivery and you can then apply a character animation to yourself. So you're essentially transforming yourself into an animated character. So here on the runway homepage, here's act one right on top. Let's hit try it now. And on this page, you'll see a little guide on how to film your sequences. Now, obviously it works best when you film with a clean background, like a white background behind you, but I'm gonna see how it does in my normal setup here without having like a green screen or wallpaper behind me. I can start recording directly from the browser here if I want to, or I can upload a video which is what I'll do. So Runway will take a little bit of time to detect your face, so make sure that your face is clear and well lit. And once it's done, this is where you can choose one of these pre-made characters that Runway has, or you can upload a picture of a cartoon that you drew yourself. For me, I'm going to actually make one with Firefly's text to image tool. And here I can actually upload a picture of myself as a reference. And then I can choose one of these pre-made styles 
or upload my own. I'm going to try dropping in this cartoon artwork from Envato and hit generate to turn myself into a cartoon character. Well, it doesn't quite look like me, but good enough. Now back in act one, let's upload the image we just created and Runway will take a little bit of time to find a human face. So make sure your character's face is human-like. Now that everything's ready, we can hit generate. Is this the future of helping creators create faceless YouTube channels? Hey mom, what time is dinner? I'm getting pretty hungry over here. While AI can still be used to create funny memes that you probably see on the internet, it is becoming less and less of a gimmick and actually a very useful practical tool that you can use to quickly create effects and generate ideas as you've seen in this video. And of course, you can't expect to just write a text prompt and have AI generate a whole video for you. There's many different processes involved and Brian from Versus Studio said it best. There is no one click solution for great creative work. So a special thanks to Versus for being a part of this video. And if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye.